Right, so my name is um, Oluwa Pelumi Adetoye, but you can just call me Pels. Yeah, I think that's, that's easy. You can just call me Pels. I'm a front-end developer. You know, full-stack developers, I don't know how they do it, but I'm a front-end developer. Um, I have um, close to over two years of experience, and it's not been easy, but then it's it's been fun, it's been challenging, but the most important thing is to stay consistent and and do what you have to do. So I hope that others join us. So we just start now. I think last week, last week Saturday, last week Saturday we um learned, we were introduced to um you know I think someone taught us how how the internet works, how the web works, you know. And then we also went ahead to set up our development environment. So I want to believe, um, Godfrey and Emmanuel, you have your voice code, right? Uh, I, think I... I said you have your VS code as well. Yes, it's set up. Uh, yes, for the functions installed as well. All right, makes sense. So, actually, for today, what we are supposed to actually cover in today's um, session is, you know, forms, understanding um, semantic HTML. Then we'll go on to um, multimedia elements and HTML folder. But then I'll quickly want us to do a recap from what we did last week. I'll just ask one or two question, questions so that we can just continue. And just continue. So, um, Emmanuel Godfrey, can anyone of you tell us, uh, based on your own understanding, how does the web work? Like, just tell us, if you be in one sentence, just tell us. How the web works. Anyone? Okay. Uh, the, 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 the webs work by, I think, when you connect to a, to a server and then you send a request. So, I think. So, from a client, like from the client to the I think which is the front end, and then so it handles the request back to the, and then it sends back a response. It send a request and get a response. So from the server and then the back end part of it. All right, makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you. Uh, what about Godfrey? What do you think? Um, if I'm to relate it to what we're learning here, I think basically. Okay. It's um like the front end is a scenario whereby um you you carry out all the processes that are that are involved in um sending um your interface. Let's just say the front, the interface, the commands you impute, and all of that. Why the back end is like the processor of all of those things. Then we talked about the Java, how it works, and all of that, basically. So all, right, all right, all right. All right, that makes sense. Thank you for your input. So basically, you know, um, if you ask me, I would say the web operates via servers, just like um, Emmanuel said, um, you know, storing web pages um, and clients like browsers. You know, usually we get to request, um, we request, um, from the server and then it's been displayed. These web pages, the content are being displayed in our browsers. And these things go via um, protocols like HTTP, HTTPS, you understand? And um, the, most of it, the basic technologies that we use for displaying this thing in our browser is the HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And that's exactly why you are here. And we started with um, HTML last week. All right, so 
without further ado, okay. I will put us join us on. All right, so let me be sure what you can see right now is my desktop view, right? You can see my desktop view, right? Yes, I can see it clearly. All right, so um, we want to I want to create a new folder. I'm sure we learned this, so I won't waste much time. So basically, this is how I work. Um, you know, different developers, um, different approach, but then um, most all these things they are actually still the same thing. So usually, when I want to work on a new project. I just go to my um, desktop and I create a new folder. So this folder now, I like us to just call it, um, let's say, uh, Magzify, let's say Magzify PC with two, right? You can still work with the existing folder you have. So if you have an existing folder, I think what you need to do right now, following my approach or you could follow um, the approach you learned last week is okay to learn one or two approaches. That's okay. So basically what I do is I double click on my folder. You can see that the folder is empty. Now what I simply do is come to this place. You can see where my um, cursor is. I just tap on it. Um, it shows the path of that particular folder on your desktop. Then I just type CMD. Now the same is your command prompt. I hope you know what your um, the command prompt is. It's like your terminal. All right. So when I type CMD, I just type enter. So it's you know opens up the terminal, and then I type code dot. You understand? I'm trying to say that, please, uh, Mr. Terminal, kindly. That dot means is actually referring to that folder. The dot means that particular folder. So I'm telling the terminal to please open VS Code in this folder. So I'll press Enter. As soon as I press Enter, the VS Code pops up. Does that make sense? So I can just go ahead and close other ones. What I did now does, does it make sense, Emmanuel Goffrey? Yeah. Um, who is it on the call? Um, Ishima, I'm sorry if if I did not pronounce it correctly. You're welcome. Um, Godfrey and Emmanuel, what I did now? Please, you, please, can, can you go right again? All right. Or maybe this time right slowly. I'm going, to, all right, I'm going to close this thing now. Sure. You have your folder, right? Yes. On your desktop. Well, like what you're going to do now is you just double click on the folder. Mine is a new folder. So the folder is empty. So you might want to use the folder you used last week. I think you should use that so that um, you won't have different folders for just work with that. So now if your folder is open now, you can see this, um, this space here that has um, the file name, the folder name rather. I would like you to respond so that I would be sure that you're following me. Yes, I can see that I'm following you now. All right, so when you click on it, you can see immediately I clicked on it, it showed the full path. You see that? So if you can see that, what you simply need to do is to replace that full path with CMD. And when you type CMD, you click on Enter. So you are simply trying to open the terminal in that folder. So like I said, you can actually do this or uh, open your VS Code the way you were taught last week. You understand, but then this is um, the approach I usually go with mine. Please let me know if all is good so that I'll continue. So if you have opened this terminal now, so like I said, you will now run code space dots. 
I said that dot means that um, you are referring to that folder. The name of my folder here is, you can see it, we have Maxify BC underscore week two. That is what I named the folder. So this code dot means that you are telling the terminal to please open your VS code in this folder. Do you understand? So code dot, then you press enter. As soon as you press enter, your VS code pops up. So the terminal has actually helped us to open the VS code in that folder. Um, does that make sense now? Yes, it does. I just did the same thing on my laptop now. Yeah, awesome. So you can just go ahead and, you know, close those ones in the background so that you can just be seeing only your VS code. So it will welcome you. You can just close this welcome. We don't need it. All right. All right, so let me be sure. Welcome, Jonik. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Did you get what I just did now? Did you follow up? I joined late, so I didn't really take notes, but like. All right, no problem. Let's, let's just continue. Please, if you are not able to ask questions while I'm teaching, please, you can take notes. Um, every 45 minutes, we'll try and take a break so that we can relax and get back. So now this folder is empty. So uh, we want to create our, remember we are working, we are learning HTML at the moment. So any file you want to create in this folder goes with an extension of HTML, like HTML, dot HTML. So we can just start with index dot HTML. So we have created a file called index.html. If you are working with CSS, which is a styling um, tool, it will be .css. If you are working with JavaScript, which is um, for making the website dynamic and interactive, that will be .js. So right now we are working with HTML. So the extension is .html. Are we good? All right, so I'm going to move real quick now. Um, last week, um, I believe that um, Sam has already taught us about the code structure. So who can tell me if we are to, if we want to quickly, you know, generate the the structure to start with, who can help us, remind us about this shortcut that we learned last week? I know. Anyone quickly? Emmanuel Godfrey? Sorry, I'm in transit. Ten, sorry, 10. All right, no problem, no problem if you're in transit. Um, who else is on this call? Emmanuel, could you remind us how to you remember that um, you learned about how to generate the HTML structure, right? Yes. Like, could you remind us about the shortcut that uh, was you learned last week? Do you remember? Oh, no, I don't think so. If you don't remember, but do you remember what we are supposed to at least start with? Do you remember? Yeah, I'm supposed to you start with doc, doc type. Oh, awesome, awesome. So that is actually referring to her document type. So now the shortcut is you can simply press um, um, shift. When you press shift um, exclamation mark, you will see it's going to show this and then you press enter. Does that make sense? Okay. That makes sense, right? So you yeah. press shift, please try to take note of it. It's actually um, a very quick way to generate the structure we'll be working with. So um, all of this has been explained last week. 
So this is our document type. Remember the document type is HTML. Sure. The document type is HTML. And then we have our head. So basically each of these tag, HTML, head, body, they are, you know, they are entry points. Are you with me? They are entry points for for different content. Are you with me? So like the doc type HTML is actually used to indicate to the web browser that the document is HTML, like it is an HTML document. Okay, so um, we we installed um, this go live um, live server last week, right? Yes. All right, so we installed live server last week. So now this title now, I would want us to change it to, um, just change it to, no, just change it to forms. Form, you can change it to form. Oh, before we change it to form, I want us to see something. Sorry, let me change it back to documents. Now, come to the base here. Can you see, go live here. We want to just um, start checking our stuff on the browser. All right, so you can just click on the go live. Yeah, let's click on the go live. So it's, it's supposed to actually pop up. It's supposed to show you in your browser. All right. So, um, Sam taught us a short code last week. I don't know if anyone can remind us. It's supposed to help us to put this side by side with the VS code so that we can be working and then we see um, what we are doing. Mm, that should be Windows key and the uh, Windows key and the arrow key. All right, makes sense. Just do that. May I just I have to just um do my manually. All right, so please confirm you can see my VS Code and the browser. Mm, all right. Okay. Okay, I wanted to show you something. You can see this title in our VS Code has document, right? Now, if you expand your browser. I'm coming. I think I need to close some things here. Close this. I'll go back to it later. All right. So you can see it's displaying document here on the browser tab. Can you see that? Yeah. If you can see that, I want us to change it to um, form because we'll be working with form. If we change it to form, can you see it change here too? So that is basically how to change. If you want to give um, your website a particular name, a title, just like, um, let's say, um, anyway, just like if you look at this Zoom now, we have Magnify Bootcamp showing here. If you look at this, um, these different tabs that we have here, there is a title for each one of them. And then look at this Chrome new tab too. There is a title called new tab. So for us, for the HTML documents we are, all work, we are working with, we want to call it form. So form will be showing right there, right? Okay, so um, come and give me a minute. We have everyone on the call now. I'm trying to slow down to be sure that everyone is with us. I have one. I just hope that's joining us soon. Okay. Let's go to. All right. So we said we are going to be working with creating forms. 
creating forms, adding form controls, form permission. All right, so let's go back to our face code. Sorry. All right. So um, we have different tags that we work with here in HTML. We have the H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. So that's like um, different hierarchies. Um, if I, if I, before we go into form on proper, I just want us to see something. In this H1 tab, let's just type, um, let's say, let's say form. You can see this now. Now, if we go ahead and put H2 and we type form, you can see it's, um, you can see that the font size is smaller than the other one. If we do the same thing for H3, H4, H6, yeah, we have just, okay, I, I omitted H5. This should be H5. All right, so these are the different hierarchies. And um, normally, H1 is usually, um, is usually for catching um, the user's um, attention. Let me let me see if um, okay. I'll show us that later. But then these are the different. This this is a particular. These are different tags with hierarchies. Now we are working with form today. Now creating a form. Form has its own tag. Form has its own tag, and the name of that tag is actually called form. The tag is called form. So you can simply type form and press enter. Are we on the same page? Let me know if you if you have this already. So you type form and click on yeah. enter. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Yeah. All right, so you have your, I right, thank you. So you have your form. Now who can tell us, um, who can tell us some of the things that, um, if you see a form, can you tell us one thing that um, is expected to be in the form? Like just tell us one thing that, like one thing, there are different things in the form, but just let's tell us one thing that's expected to be in the form. Anyone? First name. Thank you, first name. All about, all about, aside that, it could be first name, it could be, you know, last name. Let's say you are trying to fill a form. Okay, yeah, you guys feel, I believe you filled a form for this bootcamp. So you, I'm sure they required your first name, last name, email. So tell me all this first name, last name, email. There's something, there's, there's a particular place you have to, you know, put, put in those details. Can anyone tell us? Like when you have to fill a form, there's some way you have to actually type those details. You know, I'm trying to ensure that um, we, we think about this thing, because as a developer, you need to actually be able to process these things in your head. That way you're able to actually now write some code. If you don't um, understand what you actually want to do, you are not likely 
able, or you won't likely be able to write um, some code. So we know there will be first name, last name, all of those things. But then who can tell us where um, those details are being put? I don't want to use that word. Okay, so that let's just continue. Now there's usually an input field. There's usually an input field for in every form. It is in that input field that we that you input your details. Are you with me? It is in that input field that we input your details. So now each form field also has um, different elements. We have the label, the input. And then there's one last thing I would want us to also think about. After inputting your details, what do you do? Like after inputting your details, what's the last thing you do? After inputting your details, the last thing you get to do is to submit. And you submit by clicking a particular button. So our form um, comprises of, you know, label, the first name, which is the label. So there's a tag called the label tag. And then we also have an input field. There's a tag called input. And then we have the button, you know, usually after clicking, um, after inputting your details, you have to actually click a button to submit these details. So there's also a tag called button. All right, so let's just go ahead. Let's say we want to, we want to create um, a simple form, for instance. Let's want to create a simple form. Um, let's start with, um, let's say the title or the heading is um, what can we call it? Um, please provide your details. You said anyone say something? So we can simply say, let's use H1. So we can simply use this to say, please provide your um, details. Please provide your details. So that is like the heading. Now, now let's say we now want to start. We want to we require you are required to input or like they need your first name, your last name, your email address. Right, let's just work with that. Your first name. So now for first name, you won't be using any of the H1 tag. There's a tag called label. Is it are called label? Please let me know if you have any question. I can't see the call right now. I don't know those that are on the call, but please, if you have any question, if you are just coming in, please try to um, call my attention. So now we have a label. Now remember that, um, let's say the first thing we want is first name. All right, you can see the first name being displayed, right? So these particular tags, some of them require um, some attributes, you understand? And usually this attribute it is to, is for uniqueness, you understand? We want the browser to, want the browser to, we are trying to pass an information to the browser, telling the browser that this particular label is for first name. So there's a four attribute, and that four attribute, we can just call it first name. Do you understand? So you'll be, as time goes on, you're going to come across tags with attributes, like with specific attributes. And then those, the attribute, like I said, we are trying to communicate with the browser. And then there are some attributes that would, would actually need to actually send that information to the server. But don't worry, let's just take it slow. We are trying to create a basic form. We have our first name. Now, the, the first name, the label comes with the four attributes like the normal thing for, like this just simple English for, what is this label for? The label is for first name. Does that make sense? 
All right, so if that makes sense, remember that this is just a label. We need an input field. We need an input field. That is where the user or anyone will actually type in their first name. So that particular tag is also called input. It's called input. So when you type input, you press enter. You see this, does this make sense? If you look at this input now, it also came with a particular attribute. Just like um, attributes, like I said, or like I would say now, it's like an extra information. We are trying to, um, you know, give an extra information concerning that tag. Now, if you can hear me before we continue, can you take a look at this label and then this input? If I look at the form, H1, label, and input, can you tell us, can anyone, can anyone notice any difference between these tags? I would like someone to um, tell us the difference between these tags. If you notice anything, you might not be able to communicate it, you know, technically. But if, is there anything you notice? See, I clicked on this form now. You can see um, there's some kind of indicator. I clicked on H1. I clicked on label. And then I clicked on input. Like, did you notice anything? Did you know? <clears throat> sorry, did you notice anything? Now, if you did not notice anything, let me call your attention to it. Now, look at this form. This form, now, this form came with an attribute called action. But then let's still, okay, let's, I'll still talk about the action later. Oh, it's fine. Now, look at this form. This form has, um, it has, I don't know if I should call it, something like this, like, let me just go basic. This is like there's a less than and a greater than sign. So this is like the um the opening tag. It's called opening tag, and this is called closing tag. There are some tags that um come with an opening and a closing. Meanwhile, there are some that are self-closing. Do you understand? Now look at this input. The input is self-closing. It's not like this H1 that has opening and closing. It's not like label that has opening and closing. Input is self-closing. So um, later on, you, you would come across different tags. Some are but they have opening and closing, why some are self closing. All right, does that make sense? Please, I need a feedback. Let me be sure we're on the same page. Let me check the call. Um, Johnny, does that, did that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Yeah, I got free WhatsApp. Still in transit, but we won't show. Come again, what did you say? What did you say, um, Godfrey? Uh, no problem, I'll just continue. Is I'll just continue. All right, so let's just continue. Please don't forget, we're learning how to create form. Now, the next thing, in a simple form, is probably the um, last name. So we do the same thing, uh, label, label for last name, and right in between the opening and the closing, we type the first, uh, sorry, the last name. And then, we need an input for that. We need an input for that. So we have that. Now I want us to learn there's also another tag called um, BR. 
Delta called Bihar. Now that Bihar means like a brick. Like I want us to this last name now. And we want it to be under the first name. We want it to be under the first name. So we want to break it. So there's a tag. Now, for this particular one now. Sorry. In between this place. Um, sorry, we don't need all this space. I hope you know that even if you put plenty space here, it makes no difference. All right, so in between the first name and last name, there's a tag called Bihar. Do you see what happened there? It helped us to actually break the line. Like at first, we have both the first name and the last name on the same line, but then it's not actually, um, it's not looking fresh, like it's not user friendly like that. Do you understand? I wanted us to actually have them below each other. So we go ahead and put a break, be how. So we have our first name and we have our last name. So look at this imputes now. This first name, no, we'll still come back to it. Let's just continue to create that form. So, the next thing is um, email address. Email address. So, let's say the form requires a email address. So, we need a label too. Label for email. Label for email. Now, there's something that is very, very important in development. And that is naming, nomenclature. <clears throat> naming is very important. One thing about naming is um, the naming helps anyone. Like imagine there is a code base, and then you are new to that code base. If there is proper naming, like if there is proper na naming, you could actually navigate through that uh, code base without stress. What you simply need to do is to you know, understand the name. You understand? Look at this now. We called it uh, first name. Anyone who sees this will know, okay, this label is for first name. You understand? Anyone who sees this will say, will say that this is for last name. This is for email. You understand? If you look at this, this email label now, is not showing. That's because we have not actually typed it. This four is just an attribute that is passing a message to the browser that, okay, this label is for email. But then it is in between the opening and closing tag that, um, that we actually have to impute the email. So we can just type email address. So it pops up. So if you see the email address is also showing there. So let's just put a break here. Now, to make this thing readable, I think we could just actually do this just for readability. Yeah, just for readability. So we have our form title. Please provide your details. We have the first name label and impute. This BR is a brick. Like I said, this space here makes no difference. But then I'm just putting it there for readability. So the label now also needs an input. Needs an input. All right, now, this input now. Now, notice something that this input came with an attribute called type. Now, this input has um, a number of attributes. Let me see if I can show you something. Um, coming. I'm trying to look for a way to to this to see if you can display the attributes. But then we we'll just learn about one or two attributes. Now this type attribute is telling us that this whatever we impute inside, whatever we type inside this place is text like A B C either in uppercase or lowercase. 
it can actually take one, two, three, two. She understand. But then imagine we change this um this first name. Let's say we change it to a type of number. If we change it to type of number, you would see um like some kind of indicator here. Remember I said these attributes are actually used to, you know, pass a message to the browser that this input type is number, this input type is text, this input type is email. Now, once you put a type of number, then it displays these um, indicators and then you can now pick anyone. You could, you could actually, if you try to type in A, B, C, D, it will not allow it. I like the fact that it's not even aligning it. Unlike this type text that is still aligned one, two, three. But then that particular that particular number, it is specific. Like number is a number. Number cannot be A, cannot be B, cannot be. Do you understand? But then you know number can actually still be referred to as a text. She they are sending a text message. Text message is usually a combination of you know um letters and numbers, images, and all of that. So if that makes sense, let's take this back to text. OK. All right, so let's come back to email. Now, the email type should be email. Do you understand? The type should be email. It's not, you're not going to see anything different from the text, but then the browser knows that, OK, this input type is email. If I continue, please, are we are we on the same page? Any question? Any question, no, please? Are we on the same? Do you have a question? No, 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 no. I'm following. All right, makes sense. Thank you for the feedback. All right, so we have our email address. Um, can someone tell me what other thing do you think we should accept in the form? What do you think we should add to the form? All right, let's say we want to add H. Good. Let's say we want to add H. No, 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 let's not use H. Let's use gender, right? Let's use gender. All right, so we have to also break it here. So we have her label called, the, this label is agenda. Agenda. All right, so um, we can just call it gender. It's liberally for gender. Now, you know, for gender, I believe um, the, the normal genders that we have is male and female, right? <laughs> so we have the normal gender is male and female. So for gender now, you expect a user to actually um, select if he or she is a male or a female. Right now, this particular one is actually input. Let me put input, but then I will explain something here. It's actually input, but then this one is different. If you want a particular or you want users to select, um, you want users to select um, something like whether you want them to select, probably by um. You know, it could be radio button. I'll tell you what that means. But you want them to check something. Now let's 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 quickly go into that. Now, this type now, if we change it to radio, did you see what happened there? When we change it to radio, if you click on this, you can see. I'm sure a lot of us here we have, you know, we have done a lot of things on the internet. We we have had to fill forms, you know, we select. So this is actually what's happening. That moment you fill a form and then it's showing um this this thing we call it the radio um you know button input, whatever you want to call it, the radio button. So I think okay, let's let's leave it there. But then let's, I think we should have, we should have another um, label. Let's call it female. All right. 
let's call you male. Let's start with male. Um, I think I would want us to actually break it. I want us to break it. Yes, let's break it so that we would have. Um, if we break it, then let the radio button come first. All right. Does this make sense? So we have this mail. Then we have another one. If I I can just you know so that we don't waste time, I can just copy and change this one to female female. All right. So now in this form, we want the user to select whether male or female. Now you see what is happening. The user is actually able to select both, which is not is not cool. The user should be able to select whether it is a male or is a female. Now in order for us to make this specific, there is um is a particular attribute called name. There's a particular attribute called name. Now, please, there are times that you have to actually type this attribute. You write the it's called the attribute is called name equals to, and then you have your um, quotation sign. So when you put this name, let's call it male, right? We can also call it name. And then there's, we'll do the same thing for female. Call it female. All right, we'll call it female. Let me try and reduce this so that we can see it well. All right. All right, so it's not supposed to be here. Yeah, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be on the input. Sorry, not in the label. It's supposed to be in the input. Yeah. Hold on a second. Male, male. Female, female. All right, I'm coming. I'm trying to understand, like I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Come give me a minute. Sorry. Okay, sorry, I think I figured it out. So the name, remember that the type is um the the name the both this both male and female, the agenda. I think the name should actually be let's let's take away let me see. They are both gender. Uh hold on, let me see. All right, good. Let's take away this value for now. It's that will come in handy later on. All right, so for the input, for this input type radio is supposed to take for gender, the name should be the same thing. Do you understand? The name should be the same thing. What should be different is the for or the value. 
if you take away the name, if you don't put that particular name, you know, that name gender is actually trying to group them together. So grouping them together, we actually use it to differentiate uh, them. This tango for this four, this helps us to actually differentiate which is which. So we have a male, a user can select if it's a male, a user can select if he or she is a female. So if that makes sense, I think um, I'll give us an assignment later on, but then I think we should just work with this. And let's say um, the users, we have all of this. The last thing we want the user to do is to now um, submit. So what will the user do to submit these details? The user needs to click a button. So there's a tab called button, right? A tab called button. Now it's also called, supposed to take a type. Now if you look at this, there's this type, button, menu, research, submit. What we want to work with is submit. We want the user to actually submit. Now see, this tag, nothing is showing. Actually something is showing. But then you need to actually put something in between the tag. What do you want that button to do, to display? If you want it to display, uh, maybe submit. Um, submit, right. Submit. I think we should also put a break here. All right. So I think we have our form. You know, this form is not looking fine. No? Remember that... Um, HTML is actually used to, you know, create the structure of our website. It's like a skeleton. It's like your skeleton, our skeleton. But then when we put on uniform, you can see this clothes I'm putting on and my glasses. This is like um, CSS um, doing wonders. Do you understand? But then all this moving and doing, raising my hand, trying to give a different pose. That's the work of the JavaScript. Um, Godfrey, do you have any question? Te Teneji, are you there? Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, yes I can hear you as well. All right, if you can hear me, I said what we've done so far, let me, what we've done so so far, if you can see my screen, do you understand? Does it make sense? Do you have any question? Is it a network that is bad? Or okay. I don't know. The network is just breaking and the screen is freezing, freezing. My network is good, though. What's up? The screen has frozen many times on this side. And So sorry, please, uh, please. I don't know my question. I don't know if it's sounding dumb, but I'm just thinking this space is after this break line. Like, what was the need of this space, or how do you determine the space? Yeah, I said it. This space here, yeah, be this one, this one, what? Yeah, the space after the break line. This space here, yeah, this space here, yeah, right? Okay, your screen is not showing right now. We can't see your screen, pairs. That is amazing. Sorry about that. So can you see my screen now? Mm, yes, I can see your screen. Yeah, of course we can. All right, I'm sorry for that. I think there was... Okay. All right, so you said what is the... Why do we need this space here? 
Yes, after the break line. Actually, you don't need it. It's not needed, but the reason why I had to put it there is just for readability. I wanted you to actually, you know, see what's happening. Okay. So this is, yeah, it makes no difference. I'm just, just trying to make it look readable so that I don't pack everything together and you're like, what's up, what's happening? So another question, um, I think we need to put a, a space somewhere. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. All right. All right, I hope it's not, it's not freezing like this. Does it make sense? Yeah, it does, it does. All right, so I hope you understand that the, the space makes no difference. I was just trying to ensure that you guys is visible. You get that now. All right, so any other question, please? If there's no other question, please. Um, so the last thing we talked about here is button. So now we have created a simple button. We have my, let's say my first name is Pelumi. User can go ahead and type in Pelumi. My surname is Adetoye. Um, email address is you no know. all right so I'm a female then if assuming um we are connected to the server you just go ahead and click on submit do you even see what happened there as soon as you click on submit it's um, not in, it didn't actually submit anyway, do you understand? But then the form is actually um very, very is a is a kind of tag that that is very functional. It's it knows what it's actually supposed to do. So as I clicked on submit, it um gave us a kind of submission scenario. So it actually is submitted or you know, no, no, no server, no request. We didn't make any request. We didn't send it anyway. Okay, so I think that's okay. Um, Juliet, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Please, I want to know if um, what the time is now. I would like us to actually take a break before we continue. Let me let me know when. Maybe yeah. if 10 minutes time so that we can actually take a break. The time is actually up. This um okay, no, we still have um some minutes to go. Sorry, like how many minutes? Like 21 minutes to go. All right. So we're at, um, three o'clock, right? So we'll have like 21 minutes to go. Okay, so this is actually how to create a basic form. Um, I don't know if you heard me when I said this earlier, that this is not fine. And that's because we are still trying to create a structure. Like this is like the skeleton. If we want it to be fine, we'd have to now start using CSS. CSS is used for styling. We'll do it different way. Um, let me show us something. Um, let's see, form samples. All right, so you can see. Look at them. So you guys can see my screen, right? Yeah, we can. All right, so if you check Google and type form samples, you will see different form samples. Then you can go to and get the design um, inspirations on Dribble. Yes, yeah, let's just use Dribble. Let me search for fonts. All right, so all this, you can see this, see this simple form now. See this one. This one is, is too simple. Let's see the one that has 
All right, you can look at this. So you can see this, see this particular form. It says create your account, email, password, confirm password. Now there's something I also want us to quickly look at. You quickly look at. The one thing I want you to do after this session is to actually go check out forms online. If you see something um, that is different, you can ask question. Now, when, in this form that I showed you now, this form that I showed you now, you can see there is a password input, right? There's a password input. Some of you might be wondering, might be wondering how how that works. Okay, let's 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 quickly do that. And then I'll show you one more thing. Then we'll quickly go into the um, HTML semantic. Um, I know why this thing just messing up. All right, so let's say we want, after the email address, we want the user to impute their password as email. Yeah, let's say after email address. All right, let's say after email address, let's put a break here. So we have a um, label, and this label is for password. This label is for password. You can see it's showing already, and we have an input. Now, look at this input field. Now, if you are typing your password, you can see that. Imagine you are typing your password, and there's someone behind you. The person can actually see what you are typing. But then, if you don't want the user to see, sorry, whoever is beside you, it could be in the bus. Anyway, you don't want them to see. What you need to actually do is for password. The normal type for password is password. Yeah, password. So as we put password, you start typing, you can see it's been um, encrypted. Nobody can see what you are typing. You are the only one that knows what you are typing. Now, if that makes sense, there's one last thing I want us to talk about here. It's what we call place holder. What we call place holder. Now, there are some forms where you will not see these labels, first name, last name. What you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing it inside this input. You'll be saying, you see that's the first name in the input. You write it there, or you see something like input your first name. First name goes here. Now, this is what we are going to do. I hope we have learned about comments. Let's just comment out this first name. Now we have only the input. Now, right inside this input, right inside this input, there's an attribute called placeholder. Now, you can just say um, enter anything at all. It's descriptive. Enter your first name. So, when you have something like this, this is descriptive. You might not need to actually put a label like when the user says this, you are telling the user to enter their first name there. Now, we can actually do the same thing for last name. Let me comment out this. So this is enter your last name. Please let me know if um it's still going on well. I don't want a situation whereby it's freezing and no one is saying anything. Please don't let us come and waste our time here. Um, Juliet, please, is everything still all right? Yeah, everything is fine. We can hear you. All right, thank you very much. So I hope you um, understand this placeholder. So you could actually do the same thing for, if you want, if you don't want so, this particular label here, you could just put the description inside the input using the placeholder attribute, right? So I was showing us different forms earlier. All right, so I should be no different form. So let me see if there's any other thing we can pick in a particular form. Um, 
if you have filled different forms together, is there anything you would like to know how it is done? If not now, maybe later you can drop it in, drop it on the group. So I think that's 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 it. So please, you can actually work with Dribble, Dribble.com. Dribble.com, I'll probably drop it on the group or Juliet Web or drop it on the group. It's actually a website where you can get uh, inspirations. You see so many designs. We we'll, we'll still, I'm sure you still be working with Dribble a lot because you need to actually um, design things when you start learning CSS. All right, so let's just go on before the call, before um 2.30, oh, sorry, before 3 o'clock, I would want us to move on to the next thing. Um, I would want us to move on to, okay, um, there's something, okay, we have talked about the radio button, text field. All right, let me show you something quickly. Let me show you something quickly, and that is the, that is the um the checkbox the checkbox all right the checkbox um what can i use for that so let's see um i'm thinking of thinking something okay let's say um you want to say label for um let's say subjects no let's say let's say let's just say subjects or language let's say language and why am i using language i want to ask a question um which programming which programming language which programming language do you work with yeah which of the following which which of the following all right which of the following let's put a break here so that the submit button goes down all right which of the following programming languages do you work with so now this one now is different from the um, radio button Radio button is to select a particular option. Now, for this one, we were going to list, um, let's say, like three programming languages, and then we want the user to select it could be one or two or three. So it is still an input tag. You understand? But this time around, the type is check box. The type is check box. I think we should also put a break here. Now, one thing I want to understand is we are actually working with break now because this is just HTML. Like when we start, when we get deeper into CSS, JavaScript, you know, you won't have to be, you won't be saying break, 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 break everywhere, but then we just need a break right now to make things look pretty good. All right, so we have. I'll, let's say um let me put label let's say this label is for java let's say this label is for java then put the checkbox right before it all right we have java i'll just copy and and paste so let's say this is for JavaScript. And let's say this is for um, Kotlin. Yeah, let's say this is for Kotlin. So this particular checkbox, a user can actually select one or two. Mm -hmm. You can see the behavior. User can check select one or two. The user can select one or two. So please, this make sure that this four is for JavaScript, and then this four is for Kotlin, right? Have JavaScript, Kotlin. So I hope you know that um, Java Java is not the same thing as JavaScript. So 
Java is a programming language. JavaScript is also a programming language. They are not the same thing. You can browse online and learn more about that. All right, so we have a check. So this is how to check box works. So I think that's pretty much um, basic um, what we need to know about forms. If there's any other thing, let's say you come across a form and then there's anything we didn't mention here today, you could just talk about it and then we'll tell you there's a lot, there's a lot to, to learn when it comes to, there's a lot about HTML, CSS, there's so much, but then usually it is when you write these codes, like when you are doing different things, that is when you pick some of these things one after the other. You could see a particular design and then you wonder how this is done. You could just look it up, oh, how do I do this, how do I do this? So the internet is actually very, very friendly. So, so, all right, that's cool. So let's just move on to, before we move on, please, do you have any question? Do you have any question? Um, so please, when you were talking about okay. the placeholder, I thought, I thought uh, it, was, it was a comment, but then you said it was an attribute, so I don't know. You made a line there about comments, but you didn't really. But I thought um, I thought you guys learned about comments last week. You're talking about this line, Abby. Yes, uh, I think the comment is just. I think comment is just a line for the programmer. Like it doesn't show on the, but it's just there. I think. Yes, actually. Um, Comments is actually a way to, you know, they are trying to take notes or trying to um, document. They are trying to explain. You could use a call document to pass the message to a developer. Uh, if a developer gets, let's say you wrote a particular code, and then they, that particular function or whatever it is, if there's something is actually doing, you could just actually just use a comment. Like you can just tell the, the developer that, this function is for this. It's not the browser does not display it. Yes. It's just it's for, for the past. Yeah, yes, it's thank you so much it's for the It's an attribute. You said? The placeholder is an attribute. Yes, the placeholder is an attribute. Okay, okay. and then uh, finally, so how if you want this checkbox? Maybe you want it to be able to select one at a time. Is it possible? Maybe the user. You know, anything, if you want a user to select anything at a, one, at a point, it's better to actually use some um, radio button. Okay, okay. Do you understand? Checkboxes is usually for more than one options. For multiple selections. Thank you so much. Multiple selections. So if you just want a singular selection, that's when you use the radio tag. Yeah, and please take note, when you use the radio um, type, make sure that, uh, remember that um, you have to include um, an attribute called name, and that name is for grouping, like you are trying to um, tell the browser that, okay, the female and the male, um, they are in the same um, group, but then I want to be able to differentiate between the two of them. Okay. You understand? Yeah. If I remove this gender now, look at, if I remove this, um, let's say I remove this now, Control D. Now you can see I've removed this. Now let me go ahead and click on this. To be selecting the two. No, this is not what we want. We just want the user to select whether male or female. So I'll just press Control of Z. You get that? Yeah, I do, I do. Does that make sense? It does, it does. All right, thank you. So usually even this checkbox too, you can as well, it's okay, try to put, um, can put a name too. 
it's actually advisable to for input you have to take notes try to put a type a name and then value and that value is usually what is being sent to the server but then the name is actually um telling us telling um the browser the family or the group so now this java now we can put the name let's call the name language you can call it programming language so this java uh, javascript is also of the family of language kotlin is also of the family of language you understand kotlin is also of the family of language so you get the gist so please any other question please Now, if there's no other question, please, I want us to quickly... I was Hi, to cover... We have yes, three minutes to go. Yeah, three more minutes. Okay, sorry. Um, if we... I think one... Uh, quickly, before we go on a break, I want us to actually... Where is this thing? All right, we're supposed to actually look at HTML semantic um, elements. HTML semantic element. All right, so you know, semantic elements are, uh, we have actually talked about it. Only you know we have talked about it. They are also, they are tags. You understand? But then they are descriptive tags. You understand? They convey you no know, meaning. They convey uh, meaning. And usually these tags, these semantic element, these tags, they are actually used for SEO. And what do I mean by, um, what do I mean by um, SEO? Does anyone know the meaning? Have you heard of SEO before? It stands for Search Engine Optimization. And it's trying to you are trying to to communicate with the um, with the search engine, the browser. You are trying to make sure that um, it's usually used for ranking. If you have heard of um, SEO before, SEO is like trying to um, improve your website um, visibility. You know, if you go to Google now and then you type, um, let's type coding, and then you type coding. Type coding. Come on, why is this thing slow? All right, where you type, oh, strong. Coding. All right. So when you type coding, you see different websites come up. This is www.computersign.org, um, blog.osport.com, bestcolleges.com. So all these different websites, they are talking about something that has to do with coding. But then they are ranking differently. This computerscience.org has the highest rank. So it is showing at the top. So the next one is ranked second. So most of the, what we actually use for this visibility and ranking is something we call, call SEO, um, search engine optimization. There's actually more to SEO, but then one thing that can actually help, one thing that can actually help your website visibility, you know, and ranking. Um, one thing you can actually start yeah. with is what we call uh, make sure you are using the right HTML semantic. You understand? And examples of this semantic is header. Now, now imagine you are creating a, a, a website. Let's go back to our code. Let's say you are creating a website. You know, usually every website you see a navbar, right? You see a navbar. Let's look at this website, edustipen.org. It's three. Please give me like five minutes to quickly explain this. All right, let's say you go to a website called edustipen. Okay, let's just use this dribble. Now look at this dribble. You can see a navbar, right? Sorry, my, my screen is frozen. Now. Um, Juliet, can you can you see my screen? It's frozen. I can only hear audio. Yeah, I can see your screen. But like, you are frozen at the moment. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Your screen is frozen. We can hear your audio. We can see your screen, but it's frozen. Yeah, it's frozen. 
Well, you are currently on computer science. What coding and um? Yes. Still, still I think it's general. Maybe we can actually have our. Right? So. What did you say? I said same thing from over here too. So your screen is frozen. Let me share my screen again. Um, what about now? Can you see right now? I expect you to see the dribble website. What about now? Nothing for now. We're not seeing. We can't even see your visuals anymore. We can't even see even you on the screen. So this is just frozen. Okay. You are up now. We can see you, but your screen is there to display. Can you see the dribble website? We can't see your screen yet. <laughs> I'm actually sharing my screen. Also, what's 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 wrong? Uh, I think it should be on network or something. Wow. This but your visuals, fun. your visuals is showing clearly now. It's not frozen. What about now? Oh, come on. What about now? Maybe you I just stop sharing. I can see you, but not um, your screen any longer. I can see you, but not your screen. You can see me, but not my screen. What could be the issue? What about now? Not yet. The screen is loading. What about now? Okay, um, yes. What about what? now? Yes, 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 yes. It's showing now. All right, so you can see the Dribble website. Yes. All right, so I was trying to quickly explain um, semantic HTML. So I said semantic HTML is actually used to, is for, uh, it's very descriptive. You know, it's actually used to, to ensure that, um, um, to ensure our website visibility and ranking. I'm sure you heard the explanation I said earlier. So example of um, HTML, Example of HTML semantic is something we call header. You understand? It's something we call header, we call nav. If you are trying to create a nav bar, you are supposed to use a tag called nav. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we should take a break now. Yeah, hello, everyone. Yeah, we can hear you. Please, let's. All right, please, let's take a break now. Let's take a break now. Some stuff on my PC. All right, um, so let's dive in able to go through it. Um, the, I asked us to go through module one down to module five. Module one was pretty straightforward, just how the web works. Module two was basically an introduction to HTML. Module three was just basically about the structure of HTML, understanding some of those elements, tags, and then there are a bunch of tags here. You can see there's an inline element, and then we have block element. And kindly make our time to study this material. Then there's a text formatting. Talked about heading paragraph, line breaks. Um, Pels use line breaks a lot today during the course of the session. I noticed you use some heading tags as well. Um, some of these guys are, yeah, I tried using these guys in our previous session, I think so, I think, I think so, right? So, yeah, the module C5 talks about more of how to add images, then semantics. So, yeah, today, um, earlier, the first session, um, Pearls covered forms and inputs. 
So the material is already here with you. All what you need to do is just go through it. And we made it so simple such that you can go through this material. There are even code snippets trying to um, guide you on what to do. If you remember, she talked about this opening, this form structure. Everything you need to um, you need to know about forms is just yeah, it's just here right for now. It's HTML form that she, and remember she explained they allow users to impute and submit data um, to create a form. You need this form um, element who serves like a container, like a wrapper. Then the elements goes in between here. I remember she made use of the input tab. Don't go through this note. The text input fields are used to allow users to enter text or input data. Everything she talked about. Um, some she talked about attributes. You can see with type attribute text. You can this is an attribute. Attribute attribute. In a layman terms, if you want to talk about attribute. If you look at me, for example, I'm a human being. Some of my attributes could be like, could be, um, some people could be fair in complexion. That's skin. Nice, like you're seeing skin color. Fair, dark, chocolate, brown, whatever, right? So which means this type is like input, input element has a type. Human being skin has a color, and the color can be dark, fair, chocolate, brown, whatever, right? So this is also like an attribute, right? Impute tag have a type, and the type can be text, it can be radio, it can be yeah, you can see it can be radio. She made use of radio when she was talking about gender. Everything you need, trust me, is just here. It can be type of radio, it can be type of checkbox. I remember she makes use of check, she also used checkbox. Yeah, it can be type of password. Yeah, did you use password? I think so. It can be type of password, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, also yeah. has great, you see? Those are like types, attribute type, there are different types, right? As the same way human being, skin color, there are different colors. So there are type, different co types. Skin color, different skin colors. Then there's another attribute called name. Like she was trying to explain all these fields, all these attributes can even help you while trying to submit data to the back end. So now the name here will have username, right? So it's just like I have a name called Samuel Pels has a name. Um, the personality of Emmanuel has a name called Emmanuel. Johnny K has a name. Called John. Okay. So we are all, but we are all human beings. They are all impute tags or impute elements, but they have a name, different names, right? So that's just how these things work. Then they have placeholders, right? These placeholders, they are just holding, just like the name implies, that please hold that is just staying here for the meantime, while the main thing comes, right? So when you try to fill in certain form, you could see enter a name. But may I just click on that please? You see that enter a name disappears. Because it was just a please holder. Just fill in the blank, basically, right? So you have everything clearly spelled out. Specified is a single line text, input field, name, specify the name of the input field used for form submission. It is stated clear, right? Then please would have provide a hint or an example text to display. Just to, yeah, just to show you to display an example text of what the user is expected to feel. So when you see to enter your username, you know that okay, this please I'm supposed to enter my username. So yeah, you can go through this guy here and then um try to see how much of these resources you can consume. See, they know to make it as very brief as possible because I understand some people may not have so much time to start going to read bulky materials and all that. We made everything very brief, right? So we can build on, right? And then she also talked about um, semantic elements. So if you're able to study this material from week one down to week five, so now she has treated forms, she's treated 
um, semantic element. So these are like um, everything is well spelled out here. Look at the key semantic element: header, nav, main, article, side, aside, footer. Right. So the header element represents the introductory content of the container of a group. It's like it's like you can see this is the head, right? And then when you're saying um, this is the head, there are a lot of other things. The head has so many things, have the eyes, part of the head, the nose, part of the head, the mouth, part of the head, the hair, part of the head, right? So we can we now just group all of this layer of a human being, and we even have the ears, right? We now grouped all the all of this part of the human being and now give it one word head. That's applicable here too. We could now just group everything within the header section. I said, okay, everything inside this thing is like the header part of my website. Right? So you can now wrap it inside a header. So you can now say, um, yeah, looking at the nausea. Standard, right? We could now say, okay, everything below the head that's from the neck downward is like the body. And then we're looking at the body has so many different parts. Again, you have the legs, the hands, the chest, the tummy, all of them connected together. We are calling all these different parts the body. That's just how you can just take a look at me, for example. Me. It's like, all right, so there's a head, there's a me, and then there's the footer of my website. So the footer here is like maybe we are referring to the so let me see the feet, for example. If you look at the feet, you have the toes on the feet, right? We have the ankle is there. Yeah, some other funny, funny parts like the nails, right? So all those parts form the feet. Yes, let's just layman put it that way. Let's put it in that way form the feet, right? So that's just how. So those other components can still be interwoven inside, right? The same way we have a section, a section can be inside the footer, a section can be inside the knee, a section can be used inside the header. But you're just saying grouping everything up here. Remember there's eyes, nose, mouth. So the eyes can be like the nerve that you're seeing here at the moment, right? The eyes can be like the nerve, right? Yes, so it's like you're having the eyes inside the head, the nerve inside the header. So this, when you do things like that, that's when we call it semantic. Yeah, it's just big grammar. There's nothing big about it, right? Most times you, know, you may jump on a particular site and you not see any of those things. Yeah, but it is good to know the right thing, right? Okay, so great. So um, then looking at our plan for week two, Tells has already explained most of this. So embedding audio, video, element, typings, web accessibility, HTML folder structure, best practice, folder, and blah, 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 blah. All right. So basically, um, I will not want us to, I don't want us to mix those informations up, right? Because for me, also learning, there are tons of materials out there. When you, you assess these materials randomly, it becomes mixed up in your head, right? So that's why this you could just follow this path sequentially. And trust me, once you're done with these 10 models, you're good to go with each channel. Like once you're done with these two models. Okay, so basically, tells covered forms and then these semantics. So we'll cover these divs, tables, and then um, we look at these images and multimedia. Because if you look at um, the work and um, what we're supposed to do in the second round of the session, it's talking about embedding audio and videos. That embedding audio and videos, if you're able to go through this module five, that's what is happening here. You see embedding videos, embedding video and audio. This is just it. 
this thing is quite simple and straightforward. All what you need to do again is practice. You just need to practice. Like you need to work on this thing every day. If it's just you writing, dedicating one hour per day, it's going to make sense. If you want to wait till all the informations are dumped on you before you can sit down and dilute, it becomes um, kind of messy. And then there will be too much information for you to, to consume. Meanwhile, why others are still coming like? Okay, so let's jump into our VS code and do some. Sorry to so, sorry to interrupt, but I, I think it's the semantic is what we're supposed to go into as we are resuming. I don't think she was done with it. Yes, um, like we're gonna do we'll be using the semantic HTML to treat all of these guys. Okay. So basically what we're trying to do now is yes. Will consume the semantic HTML, which is these guys. And this is what I just quickly ran an intro about. Yes, right now. Okay. okay. I just talked about this semantics now. So we use the semantics, we embed videos, we look at um, divisions, tables, and it really does it. Forms is talked about this HTML validation. These are just like um, some. Accessibility, what's here, accessibility, using proper indentation format, how to nest some of those things, and then some links to setting how to validate your code base, basically, right? So which means the key things we're looking at is tables, tables, divisions, um, semantics, images, and that was just it, right? So let me, um, she showed us, and a way to quickly open our files with VS Code, where you locate the folder. Um, let me just try that. Most times, it's actually, it makes, it's actually very fast loading that method, uh, loading up a folder like that with VS Code. But for me, sometimes, I literally don't even know where my folders are on my PC. So having to go and start looking for them, it becomes a tug of war. Okay, but I think the last time, yeah, this was the folder that we worked on. So once you just open this, she was saying, all oh, what you need to do is you come here to this section, you click, you see everything is highlighted. You notice the CMD here to tell that, yeah, I do this sometimes. So once, all oh, what you need to do is just, maybe everything is highlighted, just type CMD and hit enter. So to open the command line prompt, this is your command line prompt. So from here now, you see the good part about this approach is straight away, like you are currently inside of Maxify folder. Like it just launches the terminal and you're here. But should in case, okay, what if I do not go there to do that? And then I just go ahead and open my CMD, my command line prompt. Okay. Let me split this guy. So you see the difference? This is the one I opened without navigating to that folder. It started up from users and then to add me. But this guy now opened up straight this folder. For this guy now, I have to navigate to that particular folder, right? So I now have to start using those uh, commands, TD, I'll go into. Now, if you look at this route, it means this Maxify front end is inside the folder called desktop before you, the admin, but see, this is the level I am at the moment, admin, admin. So at this junction, it means I have to, okay, do CD, desktop, desktop. You see now, see the, uh, the part has increased, I'm now in desktop. So inside desktop, I can now do CD, maxify. Now see we are on the same level now, here and here, right? So the good part now is, all what you need to do if following that approach is just to locate that folder, you click here and then CMD, right? And then from here, already you are currently inside the folder. You can now do your code dot open this current folder with VS code as she explained. And then voila, you see it has opened up with your VS code, right? That my approach is quite stressful, right? You can just, I go from the very beginning and then I start navigating, finding my way around things, right? I know I can check my PWD, you see? You see, I, I'm here. So I can see, see back to that navigation, desktop, 
So, but most times people don't want to okay, hit street and enter and then step another CD to go forward, right? I could just say, okay, PWD, see where I am. I can say, okay, CD. Now, we get into desktop. See, I'm in desktop. Look for Maxify. So, you see, I'm just switching all at once. So, you see, I'm currently here. So, if I do PWD, you see, it's showing me that I am in that folder. If I do LS to confirm, see, week one folder is here, right? So, week one folder is here. So I can just go ahead and maybe make a directory called week underscore two. So I just created the folder. I can see the two folders and now I can now launch this guy code dot and open it. Whichever works for you, go for it. There's no one way traffic in this thing. There's no one link to anything, right? Just go for what works for you and what is easy for you, right? Maybe. But I may be that command line prompt guy always in the terminal. That's why I'm always running the terminal, right? So if it doesn't work for you, please skip it. Go for what works for you. Can make use of your GUI one, click on the folder. But the end game is the most important thing is to have the job done. That's it. So great. So now these are um, two folders we just created. I can now create a file. Maybe I can call this index.html. Right, so I've created this file index.history. Um, let's try out, let's try out some stuff today. Let me see how okay, we'll try out some stuff today. So I've created this folder inside of week two. I did not write anything inside. Then let me create another folder again. I can create another folder called about.html. I did not write anything inside, just two folders. Then let's say I can create another folder called contact.html, HTML. I'm not writing anything inside. There are all three folders inside of the two. All of them, they are blank. Three of them are blank. Let me check quickly. We said we are doing tables, divisions, table divisions, images. And we're using semantic. All right, great. All right, so inside of this guy here now, remember just exclamation mark, I hit my enter button that generated this boiler point for me. I can now type here, let's see, home. This could be like my home. So let's see, to go now, see, go like if you're able to install this extension, which I believe you all installed the extension. Emmanuel, you only see up. Oh, sorry, I forgot I, that it's down. It's down now. All right, I told you I had a question to ask. Oh, yeah, but still, why you are muted? I wanted to find out if you installed the extension Life Saver. All the extensions we actually treated. Yes, all, all all the extensions I installed everything from that day. All installed. That's nice. Training. What about you? Training. Can you hear me? Jeffrey, how about you? Yeah, I installed everything. Okay, great. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I want to believe you did the same. Mm, okay. I haven't. I haven't installed all yet. Please try and do. It's very important. I will. I will do all that. I will do that. Okay. Yeah, I just saw someone Miriam on the call, and then the Miriam left. Yeah, she joined as a as a guest. I think the network is disturbing her. Okay. All right. So guys, this is our empty folders. So there's remember anything you want to show on the browser, like I said in the first session and like Pearl explained today, should be in the body section index. So in about we do the same exclamation. So we can call this guy about in the contact. We do the same exclamation. We can call this guy title to contact, right? So they are all inside of the two. So let me go to index and run it with my 
with my live server. So I click on go live. It's going to load up and then automatically open here. Now I see this place is blank because there's nothing inside. So I split my screen. I've shown you guys the command, it's just windows and then the arrow buttons to keep things side by side. All right, so we have this guy index opened. So let's see, maybe I type H1, for example. Oh, yes, there's something again I want us to try. H1. Mm -hmm. I can give this V2 because this is going to be our last session looking at HTML. So this is like V2, right? So inside this material, there's a section of this material. We looked at everything here. We looked at everything here. Yes, this is what I don't think we looked at lists. We have ordered lists and unordered lists. So these lists are like um, see maybe when you when you want to write numbers. Okay, names of students in the class number one. I can say I have Pels. Number two, I can say I have Sammy. Number three, I can say I have Johnny. Okay. Number four, I can say I have Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Number five, I can see I have who you don't even call. What am I missing? Who am I missing? Juliet. Yeah. yeah, Juliet. Great. Sorry, sorry, Juliet. We have. Juliet, we have Tenengi. Yes. 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 Let's see, we have number seven, Maxi, five, global. Maxi. Yeah, so this is like a list. You see, it's ordered, right? So this same list, let me duplicate this same list and keep it by the side. We can have, um, instead of having numbers, we could have Maybe something like a, 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 a circle, a circular dash, something. Yeah, let me just put this hyphen, 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 hyphen again, hyphen one more time. So you see this list is unordered, it's not ordered. Like it's not arranged from one to three or whatever. It is unordered. But this one is telling us specifically that pairs is number one on the list. So that's what we're referring to this ordered list and then on ordered list. If you go down this material, if you go, then this you this is just on the line and the likes, right? So, no, if you go down, you see. Here, HTML provide different types of lists to organize and present information. Ordered list, O, L, O, ordered, O, L. So on ordered, U, L, on ordered, right? So, but now this is like uh, the ordered, O, L element is used to create ordered numbered lists. Each list item is defined using LI. This is what this guy is trying to say here. Let me split this guy. So basically today in our week two, let me put the HR tag where we have this line. We want to look at, let me use an ordered list, OL, ordered. You remember they said each item in the list, look at it here. Each list item is defined using NI. OL element is used to create ordered number. This is like going to be the parent. This is like going to be the child. Let's come back. So OL, let me, meanwhile, let me put a H2 here. This is ordered. Ordered list. It is ordered list. And then hit another hit R. No, I don't want to make them too plenty. It's okay. So this is our ordered list. Start with OL. So inside you see LI. That's each list now. Now I can say, okay, the number one person was Pels. 
see there another li sorry li the second person on the list was was sammy then you see the another li called juliet here then another li we can call magnify Nova, right? So instead of other list, yeah, other list, let me call this names names of support instructors. So these are names of support instructors. You see, all that. So now let me have another key to and call this guy on all that on all that list now i call this kind of names of uh, should i just call names of our amazing front end engineers so can now see the same now if you use ol remember this is ordered right for an order you're using ul on ordered so here yeah, but the lic remains the same now we can see we can have now have emmanuel mark here can have Thingy here, thingy here, thingy. Yes, we can have precious. She's not on the call. We have Jeffrey. We have Johnny Key there. We have Johnny Key. Can now see. See, this list is now, she's on all that, but this guy now, by default, it takes the type of number, right? But I think you can come here and specify a type for it. Oops, Oops sorry about that. You can come here and see type. See, you can set type to alphabet, small letters. You see, took small letter A. Can change this guy to capital letter, capital letter A. Can change it to Roman numerals. You can see, right? Same happens here. I can come here and do type, type, sorry, type of, uh, we have, do, 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 that. What is that boy? Okay. You can have square. Yes, we have a type of square. You can see this thing has now changed from that circle to a square. Right? Yeah, so the uh, a lot of these things you can always leverage on. So basically, um, that is it for, for this guy here, right? Okay, all right, that's fine. So another thing here is just this anchor tag. We see this E element also you anchor. It's an anchor element used to create hyperlinks. It's like you're connecting different pages. If you notice, we have three different pages here, one to three pages, right? So let's say maybe I have, let me create another page inside of this guy and call it maybe home.html. Would have used that index, but I've already written a lot of other stuff inside. So this guy here. So let me call this landing page. Landing page. So inside here, I can now make this guy full. Um, what's the name of that guy again? Home. Home dot HTML. Yep. So this is the home.html. Let me be sure it's the one over here. You can see home.html. 
landing page, which is this. So here now, we have seen how allies work, right? Then I can have things like, let me just put, I want to avoid using things that have not worked with. Okay, we have worked with a P tag. So inside this P tag, I can put this span. This is another element. In fact, I think I shared with us the PDF of some elements we, I expected us to explore at, as of now. So here I can now call this guy, let's see, oh, no, no. Um, let me not call this. Okay, basically this is what we are working with. So let me use it, anchor tag. So it's an E tag, right? E, you see by default, sorry, I'm fond of using shortcuts. What I did was I just press E and then hit enter. Then it came up with this. So in between here, this is where you specified the link where I want it to link to. Let's see, maybe I type here, for example, um, www facebook.com and here now I have something like Facebook. Let's see, this is a landing page. You see Facebook is here. But see if I hover over it, look at the, if you see the bottom, just watch the bottom here. I hover, you can see that link. If I click on it, uh, okay. Let me, let me put it a better link. Let me see Facebook www. Okay, let me use YouTube for example. Let me copy this link. And then put it right here. Okay. So this is YouTube. Right, so somebody click on this thing now. You see, open up is opening YouTube, right? Let me go back. This is what we have. Look at this on our page. So when we click this, see it was opening YouTube, right? So that's how anchor tag basically work, right? So but basically, in, let's connect our own pages. Instead of connecting an external thing, we have about, let me connect, let me call this guy about so if you click on this about see it's going to open the about page let me go to the about page this one i'm navigating back and forth are we following up at all hello guys emmanuel mm, just just a little bit fast though but... I'm, I'm a bit fast right telling it i'm a bit fast I guess maybe because we don't have much time to ourselves, so it's not. Okay, let me just let me let's okay. Let me see how much. What? Well, let me see how much we can do. Okay, let me go over this guy again. We just created the folder. We have these four files inside. This is like let's say our home page, right? So this is like our home page. This is the page, and inside the page we have just this p tag we have an anchor tag inside which has about and then this anchor tag is used to direct you to anything you want to direct now i see this thing if i click on this about because i directed it to go to about page right let me put here go to about page if you click on this guy to now go to about page you can have another anchor tag for contact so i can see okay let me just call it two contact page let me remove this go to sound support you can see this is to contact page this is to our about page right so let me go now about page what is inside the about page let me put h1 inside okay? This is about page. Let me go inside contact. This is contact, right? Inside of the body, I can also put another H1. Say, okay. This is contact page. Inside contact page, we wrote this is contact page. Inside about page, we wrote this is about page. This one now, let me put. H1 up here. 
this is the the landing page this is the landing page you can see it on top here right? so let's go back this is the landing page to about page let's click this is the about page see we are now if you can see here you can see about let me go back let's click to contact click you can see contact of this channel this is contact page right great does that make sense yes it does it does all right okay all right, let me speak my screen again all right so this is just the pages we've created now so let's go back to the main page so now when you're talking about semantic html let's go into the contact page and do that so inside the body all what you're saying is the top part is like my header right so i have maybe the main section of my site here so this is like my header so she, uh, pearls talked about comments these comments that are unexecutable lines of code they don't run the computer is not going to interpret them they are just for your own consumption for another developer who is going to look at your code consumption that you know that okay yeah this was what this person is about to do here right so if i put here okay so this is like the heading section and then i can come here and say okay this is the content right i can say this is the i'll say this is the content i can say okay the heading the head section let me just say head section so i can have see another comment so shortcut to put get this comment i'm pressing control plus forward slash the forward slash that's what i'm pressing control forward slash right this forward slash this is what i press control plus forward slash we just give you this comment all right yep so um here now i can say okay the footer let me call this guy the footer the footer so there's a footer section if you look at that document look at this document let me open it semantics you see everything is aligned header now me so we have used we just got use this guy this guy and this guy which, which, which they are like the main things those other ones now can be wrapped inside of them right so let's go and continue so inside this contact inside this place now right mm. let's say i want to put an image to display so this is a contact page so let's click go to contact so we are in contact but there's nothing showing because with all these elements we have not written any text so how can i put an image to be showing here let's go back to our document reason why i'm using this document side by side is so that you know how to read through this thing and get everything on images and multimedia i click here okay he's adding images okay how am i going to do that i come down here adding images Images play a crucial role in enhancing blah, 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 blah. The IMG element is a self-closing tag that does not require a closing tag. Remember, we talked about tags, we talked about opening, we talked about closing. Closing has a forward slash. We now said the difference, with, but there are some that are self-closing. They don't require the closing tag, right? So now we say that, okay, this guy is now saying that, okay, um, it has several attributes. We've talked about attributes that are like characteristics. We've explained that, such as SRC, which stands for source, alt, width, height, and control, and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So now let's see. Now we see when I had to explain each of these things one after the SRC, what it means, this guy, what it means. And then there's even an example here IMG, parts to the file, description of the file. This is like the width and this is like the height. Okay, let's go back to our code. Is it here now? Okay. It's running here. Great. So this is contact, right? So first let's look for an we can add an image. Let's look for an online image. Um pixel lab should give me something. Pixel pixels. Yeah, I should get a little bit here. This is a free site where you can get tons of images. Right? You can even download them to your PC. 
two, I will download one. Let me download this guy. Yeah, you can see it's downloading here. Look at it here. So basically, I want to show you how to add both an online and then. So this, now see this image here. Let me open this image. We did not download this one, but we want to add it to our site. All what you need is, you can just right click, copy image address. That's what I selected. So hey, back sir. to our code is one. Sorry for interruption. Please, for 11. What time is the call supposed to end? 3.30. For real? Okay. All right, that's fine. Okay. So let me just put this image here and then um, we could. I'll still drop short videos in the group for you to see how you can leverage on some of those other things. So remember we said to use images, use the IMG tag. You see, it came with SRC. So that link I copied, I'll just paste it here. Sorry, Sammy, we still have 20 minutes to go. It's for 30. Oh, we have... oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. So you see that link I copied, I just pasted it inside this SRC quotation here. Now, this is the image. Thank you. So you can control this image using the width and the height. So this auth is like an alternative. Some, what should show in case that image does, does not display? Let me see. Let me just write. Let me call this like, let's see, background, background image, right? So this is auth. Now, let me edit this thing. Let me make a deliberate mistake here and see. I removed two and I saved. This image is troublesome. Let me make another terrible mistake. Let me remove this compress and save. Huh? This guy no good. Cool. Okay, let me do a mistake here. I was I, I just wanted to encounter an error deliberately. And let me remove that and see. Ah, uh, good. You see the link, this link, this is not the real link. Now, because the image is not showing, you can see this background image. Is this odd? So basically, this odd is in case this image do not show, tell the user what the description, give the user the description of the image, like what should be what what is broken, what is missing. So what is missing here is a background image. The user now knows that okay, there's supposed to be a background image here, but maybe due to network or something, the image will not show. Right, but here it was a deliberate mistake we did so that we can have this error and then you see this spot. But if that image is showing fine, you're not going to get that out. You see, the art is not going to show anywhere, it comes up only when um, there is an error with or maybe network. Right? So now, remember, we say we have let me go back to that. There's a width and height, but let me go back here and show you exactly. You see, on this part, so this like. Part link to the image or description of the image. You have the width and then the height. Okay, let's say we'll come back here now, right? We can now say okay, width. Let's say we can give this width, width like the how wide. Let's say it should be 500 pixels wide. You can see, right? So now let's say I give it a height. Let's say it should be just 50 pixels. I want to give it a very small height. You can see, right? So you can let's say, make it. 250. So this is it. Remember, this image is an online image. So if I open it, it's just this. So let's say if I increase this thing to, let's say 700. This is increasing 700. Let's say I increase this guy to, let's say 1000. You can see it showing here. So now when we learn CSS, with CSS, we can perform a lot of things on this image. Remember, this is an online image. What if I have this image already installed, downloaded on my PC, right? So remember, I downloaded this image. Um, it should be in my download. Yeah, this is the image. This is the image. Okay, let me see. If I cut this thing, will it paste here? Well, let me paste. Paste, yes. So I now but I've now I just cut that image and then pasted it inside this folder. I came to this folder and just control V to paste the image. Right? So now the one we have here is the online image. Right? Let me put so we can let me comment this guy out. Comment.
to me, I commented it's not going to show. So let's say we have another image. SRC. So this is the image, path to the image file. So you can see this new image is now showing. This is the new image. Like you did earlier, we can give it an odd, give it a height, you can even give it, let's just give it a height of let's say 250 pixels. You can see the height, 250 pixels. Right. So the height is just going in proportion with the width is going in proportion with the height. That's why you see when I reduce the height, the width also just reduced so that it will take a good shape, basically. So yeah, that's just it for you. See, it's just these things are very simple. If you go through this material, you made everything. Should in case it was an image, it's just this guy parts to the image. So all what you need to do, if you maybe want to try out some of these things, you can just come here, copy this code, copy it, and then let's see, I come inside this main section. Let me paste this thing here. This is the code I just copied from the material. And remove this. You can see an image showing here, the video link, right? So if we can even go to YouTube, let me open this thing full. Let's go to YouTube and get a video. I don't watch videos, so I don't have videos. So let me come in, open this guy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll just copy this. The copy video URL. I'll copy this guy. So then, okay, let me go to our code. Yep. Then back to this place. So to this part, I can just paste it here. Paste it here. Then one of these is okay. Let me just let me open this guy full. Let me stop here. Sorry, let me see. What are we missing? Comment this guy out. I want this video to play here. Did this guy do some protection on that video? Uh, let me see. We can use another page. Video embedded using. Okay. Um, in contact. Okay. Open it to young man. Girls, are we missing anything? I don't want to waste time debugging. Yeah, we can just quickly check how to embed a video. I don't want to waste our time debugging. Everything you need is just right here. Yeah. yeah, okay, maybe because we didn't give it to height, or probably maybe the type we used was not the right type. But let's just go there and see what we can do with that guy. Okay, let me uncomment this guy. Let me give this guy a height. The height of let's say 500 pixels. Good. That's big enough. I think I should reduce it to 250. 
Mm -hmm. So another thing again, you need to know the type. Um, what could this type be? This guy MP4. I think we are using MP4. Could it be our browser? Okay, let me put it on auto play and see. Okay, put it on auto play. Let's get another video. Let's get another video. Maybe this guy. Awesome. Where can we get a video? Let me check pixels. Pixels. You should be able to get free videos. Let's see if you can get the free videos here. Let's check into my network. Let me copy the link to this video. Well, let's just download this video and have it and use it. I didn't want to download anything, but I'm just trusting somebody. Let's just download that video and use it. Okay, there's a share button. Okay, why that guy is downloading? Let's be looking at other things. Let's not waste our time on. Yeah, we've looked at images. So basically, we just want to embed a video. So, but this is just all you need. Let's that let that video finish downloading so we could try to embed it and see. So yeah, basically, we've been trying to write this. So this guy is just like a structure, basically, not like. There's some big thing about semantic HTML, right? There are just some tags you you just make use some elements you just make use of them to actually tell the browser that okay, what is between from the top this section of things that tell the browser that what's in this section here, for example, like what's in this header section is like the heading content. Right, you see, it's wrapped your content, and then you could have your footer down below, right? So there's really nothing so big about. Oh, you see, there are just few of them. We we'll just read about them and then use them in your code and move on. So about these divs, divisions, and tables. Divisions and tables. If you look at divisions, divisions. Um. Division basically, um, let me look for a, a very layman explanation I give about division. It's just like you have a, a bag. You have a bag. You have a bag. So now inside of your bag, inside of your bag, you have an empty bag. So that empty bag is like a division. You can now put stuff inside. Okay. Or let's say maybe you have a carton, right? You, yeah, let me see. I'm looking if there's one beside me. There's none beside me. Okay, let me use my post. It's like you have, you can see this is like my post. So inside of my post, this is my post. So inside of my post, I have my card inside, another card inside, another card inside, and then so many other cards inside, different kinds of cards inside. Yeah, okay. So this is a card, another card, all going inside, another card, and then with some maybe pieces of paper. Yeah, my yeah, that was a ticket. And so it's like this is the post. It has all of these things inside, right? The bag. So that's just how you look at a div. Sorry, let me. 
plug in my system. These people have decided to pity me. All right, great. So a, this is a div, a box, it's a container. You now put things inside. That's just all what a div is. It's just a big name, trust me. So now if you look at this explanation, grouping elements with div. So you just use this pause to now gather, group all my cards inside. I put everything inside of this pause. Now I have only one box. So if I want to go anywhere, I just pick this one box. But this one box now contains every card I need inside. So that's just how a div is. It's like a container. You put stuff inside, and then you can now be moving this container up and down. You can use your, CS, your CSS. Okay, push this container to the left-hand side, pushes it to the left-hand side. No, I don't want it at the left hand. Take it to the right, goes to the right-hand side. So that's just how it divides. It's also it's a box you put things inside and carry along with you, right? So if you look at this material, what we have here is um we said grouping elements with divs. The div element is a versatile container. It's a container that allows you to group and organize other his other HTML elements. You can pack them and put them inside. It does not have any semantic meaning. There is no specific programming meaning to it. It is just a container. It does not have any semantic meaning. It is primarily used for structural purposes. Just is just this thing now does not have any big meaning. It's not adding anything to my life. It's just a box, a container that I put stuff inside and then carry along with me. So with just this one box, I carry plenty things. So that's just how it did works, right? Yeah, Sammy. So, yeah, it's time. We have three minutes to go. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. So here is just an example. You see, this is the opening tag, and then this is a closing tag. Every other thing are just inside of the div, right? So a div basically is just a box, an empty container. So let's say maybe if I'm using this home, or where did we write that? Okay, this index here, it was this index. So let's say I'm using the index guy. Let's say I'm using this index guy. Let me kill this guy and open it again. Let me stop and go live again. Okay, let's say I'm using this thing now. Let me show you. So I can just, okay, for this particular section, I'm talking about all that list. Right, so I can just pack everything here. So okay, everything I want it to be inside of the div. See, everything is inside of this one div. So that if I collapse this div, you see everything inside collapses. See, so now I want everything here to also to be inside an empty container, a container called a div. I put everything here is also inside the div. So that now, if I want to change a background color of everything, I can just change the background color. Permit me to write this thing. It does not really matter for now, but let's say I can have something like a background color of this guy. You can see, is that this that has this background color? I can now, okay, give this guy some space. You see, it's touching the wall, right? It's called padding. Some padding of, of, of let's say, 20 pixels. You can see now there's some sort of spacing. So it's just a container, basically. Now you see I'm styling the container, everything inside. It's just a container I'm styling, but it's not affecting what is inside, right? So now even for this same guy, I can now put this attribute style. Sorry for using CSS. We have not started CSS, but um, I think there was just need for it. So let's say maybe I can put, give you this color. You can see this div now has this color. I can have a padding, a padding of let's say another 20 pixels. Now you can see. So basically, these are containers, right? They are just containers, nothing else. They're just a box that you can use to pack stuff inside. Just like this post, I'll use it to pack all my cards inside. It's just a box. You pack things inside and then move with them. So if I want this div to go this side, I can now use CSS, okay, move this side. So as it, is, as it is moving one side, 
it is moving together with all the contents that are inside. As I am going out of my house and I pick this thing, I'm going out together with the contents of this guy. So I don't know if maybe I was able to um to to talk so much about to explain this deed of a guy. I don't know. Do we have any questions about this deep guy, or any questions about what we've covered so far? In our next session, um, we'll look at tables and then we'll dive into CSS. So, any question from me before we end the session? Any question? Okay. So, uh. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to ask something quickly. It's time to unmute and ask your question. Okay, so mm -hmm. so for the for the image, uh, you when you were describing for the image for the source, you said like when you when you did a mistake with the link for the image and then the alternate description that was there. I don't know. Is it is it that for because I've noticed also on, on some application when they okay Twitter I used to use Twitter very well so I've noticed that when they upload the image because the alternate description I, I used to think that it was just for visually impaired people and then here you mentioned that the alternate description is is for when the image does not display and then I've noticed that sometimes the alternate description is also there with the image so is there a way to make that work together i don't know i can't hear you you're on mute you're on mute okay thank you is one way is either you have the image showing or you have the auth now, true, what you said about the visually impaired people, they are actually not seeing the image. So, but they now they are able to. So they they use um what do you call it? Oh man, the name is not coming. Screen readers, yeah, they are like screen readers. So that helps the screen reader when it gets to an image. The screen reader now reads like they are actually not seeing right, but they have text readers. Like let's say they want to read the content of the website. We even have what's the name of this cat? Is it katana or what, whatever on our Microsoft PCs? If it is reading the content of your site and then it gets to an image, it reads the auth description. So even when so two things are happening here now, visually impaired people, it also help them to know what is there, right? So should in case maybe during network and then it's loading and then it failed. Maybe sometimes it may not be even as a result of an error with the link it could be maybe network not loading caching those files quickly right or some of sometimes it's not really the actual files that i don't want us to go into those technical things so but when the image has not yet been displayed because of let's say network that all description comes for visually impaired people like you said that ought works for them too perfectly that's what helps them to understand what that image is for screen reader applications apps that reads your screen they read that out to tell whoever is listening that okay they'll read the content above blah 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 blah, blah when you get to this place okay a background image is here or, or we could just read background image and then move to the next paragraph and start reading blah 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 down and all that yeah so but to make two of them display you know that is, uh, I'm not seeing a situation where that works. So if you see an image displaying side by side, most times here yeah, you could see them when it is loading. You can see the image showing, and then that ought may show just a little. But once that image is fully, when it's remember it when it is fully loaded, you're not going to see that ought. But trust me, a whole lot of sites out there. If you scan through them now, you see. Um, let me see if we could quickly we'll see one here. So, sorry to interrupt, but just just like I told you, we, we I noticed that was on Twitter. So I don't know, maybe since you see there there are website and then web applications. So like on okay. Twitter, people upload images with alternate description. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see my Twitter account. Yes. 
So let's say this my media, media, and then let me see. I upload this. So where is the alternate description? Yeah, I think I know the alt you're talking about. Yes, that alt, does it display? Yeah, like at the bottom of the image, like at the left hand bottom, most times of it, of when you see images, there's always an alt there, like you can still read the description, even with the image displaying. Maybe it should be on mobile, maybe not, maybe it doesn't display on the website, but on mobile. Okay. Yeah, but most times that's the essence of those odds. Yeah. Now, obviously, they are collecting that odd and populating it there. So, for us writing the front end application and then you're manually embedding an image, you pass in that odd. Okay. For now, if you look at this web app, for example, it's like you're trying to impute an image URL. So, that odd now could serve in as. Now, okay, if you see, we are looking at these people's video. You can't see any odd. This is an image. You can't see an odd. But how can I, hmm, I want to find a way to mimic my network to be bad so you can see. But if I try to do that, then it's going to affect this course. So we know end up, we won't see any of the two. Yes, I would have I, I've, I've experienced all of that. Uh, the description, maybe they are telling you this is a background of maybe they have given a description. Uh, I've experienced all of that when using the web. So. It was just when you said that the odd only comes up. So that was why I was just asking that, okay, maybe whether it's because it's a web application and then maybe for the website. So it works across board. It works sure. across board. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, I was thinking probably you could send the screenshots maybe when it comes across it next time. Yeah. Yes, good. Maybe if you come across something like that next time, just screen grab it and share, drop in a group. Okay, from so Twitter, we are used to see it, right? Anywhere at all, you come across it. Okay. Just can grab it. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, like Pels has already dropped the description in the chat. The odd attribute provides alternative. In fact, it's alternative text. I think that has the meaning of that odd, right? Um, let's check. What is the meaning? Of alt mm -hmm. in image tag. All right, guys. Um, so basically, I think we have exceeded our time. Any other question? Oh, I was going to this screen. Is there any other question? Hello, guys. Oops. Okay, now you can see an alt text. The required alt attribute specify an alternative text for an image. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? We can hear. I uh, can hear you. I can, no, hear, we you. can hear you. Yes, okay. we can hear you. Okay. Look at this condition. If the image cannot be displayed, so you see, it provides an alternative information for an image. If a user, for some reason, cannot view it because of slow connection and error in the SRC. Remember what we did then was and we, we made a deliberate error in the SRC attribute. Or if the user uses screen reader, yes, like I said about screen readers too. Yeah, so basically guys, um, that's just it for today. So if you not have any other question to ask, um, we could call it a day. I also do well to drop some materials in the section, in the WhatsApp group on how you can navigate some of those things. Is there any other question you want to ask? Emmanuel, are we good? Jeffrey, Tinning, are we good? Uh, yeah, we are good, we are good. Yeah, today, today my network was so terrible. I didn't get to hear the system section of the class, but I hope maybe the materials will be dropped on the group and I'll do where to just follow. I was even having a running stomach, so it was not funny today. Oh, so sorry about that. Yeah, you have, you will definitely have links to the recording. And um, for the resources, I think we'll share the link in the group. 
I don't know if you have access to it. You may also yes, want I, to... I, I, I saw the first one. I think I commented on when I tried to access it and it was thin. It was a virus file, but I think later on I could download it and then I, I went through it. Okay, great. You also have access to this, remember? So guys, um, okay. take out time and go through this thing from week one down to week 10. Anything at all, they have any time, just drop that section. If it's a particular chapter, so next week we're going to be looking at tables Hello? and um, maybe Pels may want to drop something for you guys to work on. And then we'll, yeah, we'll still run a recap and see how much we can do. So thank you so much, guys. Um, if there are no other questions, um, do have a wonderful evening and uh,